you so much, Becky, for that music that absolutely transported me. And thank you, David, for that very generous introduction. I know David um, from his being selected by Carol Ann Duffy as well. <laughs> Superstar. Yeah, anyway, it's an absolute joy to be reading here in Manchester. I seem to have read everywhere but Manchester lately. So thanks for inviting me um, and thanks everyone for coming. I guess my first poem is, is a family poem, but in the background it's also a climate change poem. Um, as soon as I could walk, I'd be dragged out by my dad on walks. Um, and this looks back at some of those experiences. It's called The Flower That Breaks Rocks. He introduced his daughters to Ben Nevis. You take the bearing, line up the arrow, pointing to moonlight gully buttress, minus one gully. We didn't care until Dad found us a saxifrage. Its blooms were spokes of the North Star. Saxifrage means rock breaker. Nivalis, snow saxifrage. Dainty alpinist, chinking her roots into fissures and fractures like crampons in toeholds. But I see now what he could only glimpse that she and the other alpines, rose roots and pearl warts, are scrambling skywards until all that remains for them is cloud. So my father was a petroleum engineer, my grandfather was a petroleum engineer, They've got a daughter who, uh, and a granddaughter who works in environmental humanities. So there's a little bit of a generation gap there, really. Um, I'm interested in oil as, as a commodity, but also a force, um, a political force, a cause of war, um, the force that is at the root of climate change, really. And while it enables so much of modern society, there, there are also so many compromises, um, and I wanted to look at the, the kind of fault lines of that and explore some of those ideas. I was horrified to realise actually that the commercial ink in an ordinary biro usually has petrochemicals in it. So this poem plays with that idea. The gift. I wanted to write, speak, but it wrote, spark. Loaded with cartridges, it rested on the desk. No one dropped it or chewed the tip, but its tactics grew underhand. I wanted to write, Je suis européen. It spoke for itself. Je suis iranien. I unscrewed nib from body. Inside, the pipeline of what stirred freighted and volatile. Oceans, continents shifted. The drill bit woke it to burn. Liquid to solid carbon black, changing state back to ink. Indelible blots, my hands smudged shirts, doors, tables. Each murky finger mark printed a tiny globe Fuel lines from Persian Gulf to Gulf of Mexico. A newspaper flapped to the doormat, slicked gulls' wings. Everything written in fire and oil. I tried to sketch a cottage, so the gift drew smoking rubble. A blazing refinery spoke to my line, thank you for this beautiful Ottoman pen. Um, I seem to have this obsession and interest with animals and birds that change colour in the winter. So uh, I've been roaming about in the hills 
in the Cairngorms with my cousin trying to film mountain hares recently. The speed that those things go uphill is ridiculous and they're very, very difficult to film actually. We did manage to get some footage of them kind of staying still, being half asleep. Um, and I'm interested in the threats that climate change poses to these creatures because they may have to adapt either to live higher up or they may have to stop changing colour to, to winter white when there's no snow. And some of these animals feature in, in my poem, Rhyme, which is a wintry poem. Barbed wire muffled by frost, snow snuffing light of out-of-season gorse. Grass on the spine of skidder hardens to plumes, it, as if shed by swans following the pole star. Snowflakes stipple our gloves. My love picks a heath rush reed stem that is hardened to a quill pen, and on the wind writes to spell my name, spindrift rising from the fell. I fear the extinction of winter. So, in a drift, I sketch a snowshoe hair, then snowy owls and snow buntings to call up birds, blizzards in their wings. I'll read you a poem about some ptarmigan I encountered a few years back. And my cousin managed to film them then, although, you know, he kind of lugged his Nikon camera um, for the entirety of the hike and he was going to have to stay in a boffy with it and the footage is very wobbly. But he did manage to get them and um, the, the ptarmigan I think is a really remarkable bird. It changes colour completely in the winter and if you've ever heard their call, it's the strangest thing ever. Ptarmigan. Even their eyelids are feathered, the most high arctic of British birds. That cry, like the clacking of pebbles. Beakless and unclawed, we needed picks, crampons, down jackets, and four pine logs crackling in the great Utkura. In December, a scouring wind on the Devil's Point sent us scurrying to the Rock of Taylors, named for the five caught out in a blizzard. New Year and the bird is in spate. Ladies mantle blooms, and gnats swither from between boulders. But those Ice Age refugees require weather from beyond the north wind, a snow cloak to outfox the eagles. There, they huddle in a melting drift. Step too close, and they burst into flight, a snowstorm towards the angel's peak. <coughs> My last poem is called Waterland. I, I lived in Cambridgeshire for three and a half years, and as somebody who's obsessed with hills and, and walking, I don't quite know how I managed to do it without going mad. Um, but I, I'm trying to capture a sense of the town, all the voices it, it has. I'll try and do some of them for you. Um, and of course, this, this poem is quite cheekily haunted by, by older voices as well, as well of poets and, and writers who have been associated with those, those very flat but somehow captivating landscapes. Waterland. There is still pike in Jesus' ditch, the length of three finger joints, quicker than dactyls, gone. Before you can say Jack Pickerel. Drowned land, drained land, where earth is silt and blood and river, fenditton stippled with pools of Milton's vocal reeds. City built on water, don't you know the wash is inching closer? Everything swayed by the way of water, both path and walker. A drift of apples drips from a tree. Nut hazelnuts flow past on the water's skin. 
nutshell nacelles channeled to its brim. Flash of a flank, the surface speaking circles. A barge man on the far bank plays blues from a different delta. If it keeps on raining, living's gonna break. George Gordon stabled his mare in the meander meadow. They swam naked and unsaddled, watched by yellow irises. Along the bank, he walked a bear. His pool is jammed by a concrete weir. When the levee breaks, mama, you gotta move. More cook do run, Amira. I'll grab a beer. Cassie, read my scope of horror. I'm better with cards. Oh, you literate barbarians, haven't you heard of probability? Stanton, Water Beach. Past fly tips, brambles, and fields cropped by shearlings, I swam in spring fish rise through weed clotted water. The arches spoke echoes. The current led to water lilies. A damselfly nymph shed its skin on mine and dried its wings, but autumn found a drowned man floating where I'd swum. If I ever reach the head of the river, I'll raise a glass to my father's ghost out there on the Isis, his crew plying eight blades. Pull! Like you're pulling a tally off your granny! What it takes to make a mountain man leave his home. Water Crowfoot City. Willow roots in your cellars. City of Daphne of winter coughs and vials disease. Slow city. Jade vine city. Your fellowship of swans and muntjac. We stopped. Dead. As a giant bronze hare. It stood in the garden of a dissolute pier. My man said he wished he trespassed over the boundary fence and pissed. Ely's belfry sails on wetland mist. Eel Isle, culverts of fish poachers and fike nets. My friend Eli trapped an eel and kept her till she silvered. She was thirsty for salt, slipped her tank and slithered back to her sea road river. Each eel an L of Atlantic. Going down, going down. Tonight's when the grotto can't rest in its bed, casts its coverlet across the meadows, floats over the orgasm bridge's mist, sleepwalks in the chords. All <coughs> streaming, who hushed me when the horizon <coughs> seemed to capsize? When the levee breaks, mama, you gotta move. May Rand told me she was carrying a girl. She kicks and pivots in her waterbed, passenger voyaging towards the light. Tell me some strong female names. When the levee breaks, mama, you gotta move. My sister's children's children will weigh anchor, sleep over the waves, hunt under them, raise fish, graze kelp, their voices remembering gills. They'll listen for whales in the shell of the ear. <coughs> Karina in the 
sea sky, pray for us. Capricorn of snow nights, lead us. Vela, grant us a following wind. Cetus of the depths, uplift us. City setting sail, barge and tarpaulin, town. When the levee breaks, the meadows, sea grass, going down. Octopus in the undercroft, barnacles on skylights. When the levee breaks, during storms, the bells of keys and queens still ring beneath the water. Your children plotting courses for all points of the compass. Thank you.